Hello and welcome to episode 247 of the Mark and Me podcast. As always, I'm your host Mark. Now joining me on today's episode is the actor Daniel Roebuck. You may know him from films like The Fugitive, a lot of the Rob Zombies films, Free From Hell, The Devil's Rejects, the Halloween remakes, also the TV series Lost, and there's so much more. And on today's episode, we get to talk about his brand new film, Rob Zombies, The Monsters. Daniel is amazing, and from the moment we start talking today, the chemistry is there. He's one of my favourite guests I've had on, and it's an absolute blast. And that interview will be coming up in just a couple of moments' time. But before we get there, let's quickly touch base and talk about my last episode. Thank you so much to everyone that tuned in and listened to my interview with the amazing band Grumster. It was so good to have all the members on the band. It was a whole new dynamic when you have three different people to talk to and the episode was a great success. So thanks again to everyone that took the time to listen. But today it's all about Daniel Roebuck and I really can't wait to share it with you. So I think the best thing to do is to get straight to it. So here's me and Daniel talking all things film and TV. So Daniel, thanks for joining me today on the Mark and Me podcast. I'm I'm so thrilled to be here on the Mark and Me podcast, and and I like being one of the title characters, uh, yeah. you know, because I guess you're Mark and and I'm me. So whenever you're the title character in any project, uh, you know you've got a good part. So it's like the two leads, isn't it? We, I yeah, think we're, no, it's the buddy comedy. Me and you. Yeah, we're the buddy comedy. What? Well, but the problem is we should not get along at first. And then in by in the second act, there should be this thing where we realize we see life the same way. And by the third act, you know, we're we're uh, fighting the villainy, and uh, that's that's what we're doing. So I look forward to. The well, I'm writing down here now. In ten minutes' time, become friends right. with Daniel. So there we go. Yeah, we're mostly mortal enemies now. Oh wow! So that's going to be a hard start. So Daniel, well, I, luckily, I'm a good Christian man. So well, <laughs> Let's let's rephrase that. Luckily, I'm a Christian man who tries to be. <laughs> so uh, let's. I, I'll I'll gag my way through it, even though we're not best friends yet. Okay, so I'll be quite arsy to start with. So I'll be yeah. like, so Daniel, I heard you're an actor. I don't care about any of your work. So tell me why you just bothered to become an actor, or at least try. Yeah, um, you know, I wanted to meet girls, uh, and I thought it's better than the ballet. Uh, so uh, I've been an actor for a long time, uh, and I know uh, anybody who tuned in late will be like, why are they yelling at each other already? Uh, <laughs> folks, we were doing a bit that's called a comic bit that Mark and me were doing. Um, so I've been acting for a long time. Uh, and uh, the reason I've been acting for a long time isn't any highfalutin um uh, you know, Shakespearean, dramatic, thespianic reason. I loved TV and movies when I was a little boy, and I just wanted to be on it and in it, in them. And so I kind of lived a life that guided me toward that possibility. So as a kid, tell me about those favorite films or actors that you saw. When I was growing up, I was an 80s kid, so I was into stuff like Gremlins, Goonies, Lost Boys. What were those films that you watched as a kid that made you say, one day I want to be like those guys? Well, it's so interesting because you had movies that spoke to you as a kid in the 80s. Uh, in the 60s, that wasn't really the way. Movies were mostly made for adults if they weren't a Disney movie or Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, let's say. So uh, I was watching classic horror movies. Frankenstein, The Wolfman, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. That was kind of my, you know, my first, if I had to look back, Mark, honestly, and say, that's what I remember watching first. It was monster movies. And there was a, a point in there when I, I, you know, the fact is, when you're a kid, you don't know anything. You don't know anything. Like, I love, do you have kids? I don't know if you have kids. I don't I, know. I am a big kid myself, but I don't have kids. Yeah, me too. You know, I always have. Yeah, toys around. Oh, wow. Nice. But, but uh, you know, kids don't know anything. And then they think they know everything, especially kids nowadays, 20-year-olds, think they know everything. And they're as stupid as any group of people who've come along up to this point. No offense, but uh, read a book. So um, 
look, I've just cut off half your audience. You're not really stupid, but we have to get educated. Anyway. But they'll still tune in for me. They just won't ever now watch any of your work ever again. No, no, that's all right. That's, <laughs> I'll, I'll win them back. I'll, I'll be in Terrifier 3, and then I'll win them back. <laughs> um, but uh, so you don't know what an actor is when you're a kid. You don't know what an actor is because you don't understand that. And then one day there was some epiphany when I'm watch, you watch like there's Boris Karloff. Now I know it says as the monster in Bride of Frankenstein. And then he's Dr. Neiman in the House of Frankenstein. And you're like, oh, that's who that is. That's always oh, puts on makeup. And then he becomes. So whatever those early transformative movies are, they stuck with me so deeply. And uh, people may or may not know this, but I've collected on Universal Monsters uh, since I was a little boy buying model kits uh, as a child. Uh, you know, that's what I was asking for uh, up, to, up to now. So it's no surprise that I have this. For the and, audience out there right now who are listening. Oh, oh, we can't. Oh, they can't. We're not on. So I'm showing a Remco, uh, a Remco Grandpa Monster doll from 19... 19- 64 and now aren't you jealous i'm showing uh a neck oh, that's cool an a neck of dolls of the monsters which were designed to be uh just like these so i'm sorry that you can't see it uh but um they're pretty great neca monsters anyway mark that's uh where i started and then i was a clown i was a ventriloquist i was a magician and i found the theater at 13 and then that was that was that and even though i found i love the theater and god has given me a very d- delightful gift to be uh very free and i think good on stage it really was movies and tv that i was yearning for so i eventually but you started out didn't you directing and writing a lot of plays that's why your kind of introduction to the world was oh thank you for yeah so when i was a, i mean that was a little boy i was in first grade and I came to Sister Kathleen and said, Sister, I wrote a play. And nobody knew better than Sister Kathleen that I couldn't even write my name. Like, <laughs> no, and it's a fact because yeah. and you couldn't write that's they taught you in first grade what writing was. So um, you know, my play was a lot of drawings of scenes. So she helped me do my play. So I started then. I've always written. I write now, I write, I produce, I direct. Um, everything from my child is, is, is a key element of my adulthood, oddly. And, and, you know, we're here primarily to talk about the monsters. Now, here's, I mean, you can't even make this up. When I was 12, I was a clown in a circus, and I had to create a clown name because I didn't have a clown persona. I got hired through an audition. And uh, so, you know, the rocket scientist uh, you're listening to right now decides I'll be a vampire clown, a vampire clown, because that's that's common. <laughs> uh, so I was a vampire clown named The Count. So at 12, I'm a funny vampire named The Count. And at 58, I'm a funny vampire named The Count, thanks to Rob Zombie. Talk so, about foreshadowing, Jesus. Isn't that something? I think he had a lot to do with it, actually, Mark. Um, uh, him and, and people above. I've been very blessed and lucky. And I even have a collection of monster stuff. So imagine what it's like now for an adult like me to be to be like on my own shelf. That sounds ridiculous. Are you sitting there sometimes pinching yourself? Because when you look at your IMDb page, you look at stuff like The Fugitive, you look at Final Destination, which some of my favorite horror films, like oh, Beer and Pizza, Have a Night In, Final Destination is just pure entertainment. It doesn't need to be oh, anything right. more than just fun. Yes, and I, I one agree. of my most underrated films of all time is Boba Hotep. So you've got this incredible CV of some stuff that if I told you as a kid, you'd be working with these people like Bruce Campbell and Rob Zombie. You must have been like, fuck off. That's never going to happen. Well, you know, obviously back then I was a kick when I met Rob Zombie. I didn't know. I mean, I knew what White Zombie was. I didn't know the guy's name was really Rob Zombie. Uh, but, but you know, I think in a greater scale, if I would have known as a child that I'd be killed by a phantasm sphere, that I'd be killed by Michael Myers. I mean, I remember you. I remember going to the theater and watching Halloween with my buddy Scott Brunel. How can you imagine? 
Oh, there you go. Heck, I, I did a movie called Disorganized Crime with Fred Gwynn, uh, who spoke very freely and graciously to me about the monsters. Imagine if I would have said that, you know, if he's Danny, why are you asking all these questions about the monsters? And I'd say, well, I'm going to do it in like 38, 40 years. I just want to be ready. I would have never known. Heck, think of this, dude. I'm Count Dracula in a Universal Studios movie. I'm one of a group. And we got a new one, too. We just brought Nick Cage into the group. Um, that trailer last... looks awesome, by the way. Nicholas oh. Cage is him. I think I'm like, yep, take my money now. Well, and isn't it interesting? There's already, just like there was backlash for the Munsters, uh, there's some weird, like, thing going on in the world now. The Munsters is such a joyful, fun, silly movie. People love it. But, you know, every now and again, some goof, you know, like the movie's this or the movie's that. They were already saying that about Renfield. Now, I just saw the menu with that Nick Nicholas Holt. Yeah, I've got it on Disney Plus ready to watch. I can't wait because I love Anna. Um, I forgot oh, her name now. Yeah, the girl from The Gambit. Yeah, yeah. It, can't wait. It's, ter it's terrific. And he's a terrific actor. That kid is great. And I remember him, right, in About a Boy. Yep. Great, great actor, grown up. Handsome boy, handsome young man. Reminds me a little, actually, of my my son Buster. Not in I, when you see the movie, that might be a detriment. But um, anyway, uh, great stuff. Yeah, Renfield looks great. But I know I know that we should talk about the monsters because we want people to uh, enjoy. It's finally come to England, just like in Monsters Go Home when the monsters came to England. We've come to England. It's about time. Uh, and uh, I've been seeing some really nice feedback from people. They're really enjoying it there. So talk to me about when, obviously, I know Rob Zombie cast you in Devil's Rejects and Halloween, so I take it you've just had a relationship and kept in contact. So the moment he said the word monsters, did your eyes kind of spark eye and you were like, God, can I please at some <laughs> way of get involved because then I can hopefully have a figure of myself that I can put right, on my wall. That I could be a toy. Well, so as these things happen, I it's funny, I was listening to a an interview that my very talented co-star, Jeff Daniel Phillips, did. He was driving when he found out about the monsters, and I was driving when I found out about the monsters. Uh, my wife at the time, we were going to a, a wedding in Peoria, and she was wearing a Lily Munster shirt. Like, we're not pretenders. This no. is we, we truly enjoy this stuff and we're driving and the, you know on the rented cars it comes up on the on the thing it says call from rob zombie you know when you plug your phone in yeah and we look at each other and we answer and he tells me about it and and i'm you know i think i even said if you're punking me this would be very mean yeah don't <laughs> fucking do this to me man yeah. i'm driving Please. So he wasn't punking me. And I think, you know, I can't speak. I can't speak for Rob. Um, and uh, I've never, I, I have yet to watch the commentary on the movie to hear if he, what he comments. But look, I, I'm a, I'm a hardworking person. I've never taken acting. I've never taken myself seriously. I try not to, but I take what I do very seriously. I'm always prepared. I'm always ready. I never fatigue. I do whatever they ask. And that's what, as a director, that's why we always work with our friends because we know our friends will step up to whatever we ask of them. So, you know, I, he was probably just watching my antics for the last 20 years. And at some point he went, oh, that's grandpa. That's who can do it. And what's really interesting, if you knew, I knew Fred, I knew Al. I am Al's shape and size. People think he was small. He wasn't. He was tall. He was six foot tall. I think about 210, 220 pounds. Um, that's a little, little less than I was when I did it. But I filled the same space as he did. Um, and we're from kind of the same area. And I'm not the second guy to play grandpa. I'm the sixth guy to play grandpa. Um, but I am certainly the one who who paid attention to what Al Lewis did and brought Al Lewis. I don't think I could have approached the character anyway, but through him. I and wanted... that's what I was going to say. Did you kind of want to pay respect and do it the right way like that? Or did you want to kind of have a bit of a fresh take on it that would 
leave your mark on it because my favorite franchise and films are horror but jaws is my favorite film of all time oh, sure. i think it's an absolute masterpiece now not that this would ever happen but if it ever got remade and they said mark do you want to play the part of quint i don't know if i could go in there and try and do that part as robert shaw or i'd try and do my own take on it because it's so well done i'd be like i don't think i can even try and I'm not worthy of polishing, polishing his shoes, so I'd have to try and do it my own way, and then I'd get criticised for it. So how did you approach it? Because you want to pay respect because you're so in love with that character and the franchise, but at the same time, you probably want to do it respectfully. Well, I, 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 I you know, I, you, first thing you do is you subjugate your ego to the process. Look, they're, they're gone. I mean, I, that was some of the weirdest comments, you know, they're... He's no, he's no Al Lewis. He's no Fred Gwynn. She's no Ivan Carlo. Um, duh. And, you know, conversely, they're not us. Uh, no. And that's just kind of in God's great plan. He puts us here and he lets us leave a mark and then we move on. So um, I knew Al well enough that I would not have wanted to just do me as grandpa. Anyway, nobody would have wanted that. I think what was genius is what Rob did is he gave us that ability uh, to, um, you know, like I have the mustache and yeah. the mustache kind of makes it mine. And even the mustache was the mustache turned around the world. Grandpa doesn't have a mustache. Well, folks, he does now. Uh, you know, when Eddie Izzard played it, he had a goatee. Nobody, he didn't look like grandpa. And it was a complete bastardization of what, the original intent of the story was, and there was no backlash to any of that. Rob Zombie gave the people of the world the perfect monsters movie for this time and space. It's fun. It's silly. It's a story they haven't seen before, as opposed to the TV movies that they did are kind of like extended. They're extended episodes of a TV show, but the TV show existed in a 26 minute format. So when you stretch that to an hour and a half, you, you really are pushing it. Rob came up with a completely different way to get in. And I invite people to see it. They're going to love it. And I want to say something else. Kids love it. So it's a family movie. Watch it with your family. Do you wish sometimes you could be strong minded enough to switch off and never read the reviews, even if they're glowing or there's trolls out there that slag you off? Because you've mentioned a few times on today's interview how people have said this and said that. But sometimes I just try and ignore the reviews because I just think it's only some guy who just wants to hate something even before they've seen it. It seems like a trend at the moment to hate stuff and not give it a chance, even without seeing it. I would invite people to look at my social media, Mr. Daniel Roebuck, about a week and a half ago. I, I did a video, a 10 minute video where I addressed, I addressed that. I think, th I think that's indicative of a bigger problem in which we're allowing, unfortunately, uh, the, the, we're being farmed for information and the way they farm us most efficiently is to divide us so that we say, we draw clear lines. So they would make you think 50% of the people didn't like the Munsters and 50% do. But I'll tell you, it's 98% love the Munsters and 2% didn't. But it's all it's all fake. So not fake. Yes, people could definitely not like the thing. But why be so vocal about it? I don't like lobster. I don't go to Red Lobster and walk from table <laughs> to table and, and ask people, tell them that their food is crap. Your food holding is boards up saying don't yeah. eat lobster yeah. yeah like what's why would what what is the need of our society to do that now and that's indicative of something that's a problem so i know we have to go soon i would just say in closing yeah you you asked could i ignore the reviews sure but i've i've got a a very firm hide i've been reviewed since i was a little boy yeah i've been acting so, and, you know, nobody was like, oh, this kid is 13, so let me not take a snarky comment. Um, it's just what reviewers do. But in the day, the guy who reviewed the theater was someone who was schooled in, read about, constantly involved with the theater. Now we just get anybody who says, you know, somebody says, I didn't like it. I couldn't get through 10 minutes. The next guy says, I couldn't get through five minutes. Next guy says, I couldn't get through two minutes. Well, not only is that not funny it's just like 
with, this is what you're doing. You're one upping negativity. Why don't you plus positivity? And and that's kind of the closing point. Um, I I was surprised that something as innocuous as the Munsters would teach me this lesson. But we made a great movie, and Sherry Moon Zombie, Jeff Daniel Phillips, myself, all the other actors, Richard Brake, etc. We worked so hard to entertain people on a very small budget. We what we had to make the movie uh, probably went to half of one day on uh, the Adams Family series. Yeah, you know, they had to do the you know. 30 days to make their pilot, whatever we had. He just, what Rob Zombie did was a miracle uh, with Universal. My final Zombie. question for you, and I do this on every episode, and I've done it on nearly 250 episodes. Oh. You get to choose the very final piece of music that's played. So after our interview is all edited and wrapped up and out there for the world to listen to, there's a piece of music that can be played by any band or any score or anything that you love. But I'm putting you on the spot. I want the answer right away. And when I ask the question, the one that came to your heart and your head straight away, what song that means a lot to you would you love to be played right now as this interview is wrapped up? Ode to Joy. Oh, lovely. And what's the main reason why? Oh, I just think it's the most perfect piece of music ever written. There you go. That's a great reason. Now we agree. We're friends. I feel like we're on the same page. The See, we're at the end of our we're at the it. end of our story. We've it's done perfect. It. That it's journey was comedy. spot on. Great. Now well, we need to work together a lot more because we're going to be winning all the awards for this. We're going to be flown all over the world. People oh, will want us everywhere, and I can't wait for more. And it'll be like Elvis. Whenever we walk in the room, they'll play Ode to Joy. That's what I'm happy with that. That would be the best entrance music to walking in a room ever. Perfect. Uh, hey, God bless you and your listeners. Thank you so much for your time and energy. Thank you, man. And it's been an amazing interview, truly. And I hope that one day we can cross paths again and come on for longer because I feel that we've scratched the surface today and we could talk for hours. Anything you want. I'll, I'll always be working, so we'll have something else to talk about. That's uh, great. There is a big Star Wars project called Jedi uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which I may or may not be in. I, I saw it on your IMDb, so it must be official. I hope so. Uh, but uh, so you're welcome to come back on and then we'll have a whole few hours talking about Star Wars and Jedi. Oh, no, perfect. I love it. I appreciate you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Take care, buddy. Bye bye. So there it is. There's my interview with me and Daniel Roebuck. What an amazing guy. Someone that put the questions back to me. Someone that took control of the interview and at times just took the reins. And it felt like a really healthy conversation. A great dynamic between us both. And I absolutely loved him. And you heard him on the podcast himself. He said he's up for coming back. And do you know what? I really do believe I could talk to the guy for hours. It was so good. You heard us talk about the Munsters there, which is going to be available now on DVD and Blu-ray. And if you stay tuned to my social media channels over the next few days, there'll be an opportunity to win this on Blu-ray. It's a really good family fun film and Daniel shines through it from the start to end. He's absolutely amazing. And I just love the guy. He's someone that's come on the show and stole my heart, and I really can't wait for his return. Again, if you've really enjoyed today's episode, the podcast will always remain free. It will never be charged for, but what I do ask is you to share it, because it does actually go a huge way. If you're listening to this podcast and you've enjoyed today's episode, and you're on Twitter, and you see the tweet for this episode, just hit the retweet button. It takes one click of a button, and then suddenly all your followers might just see the episode and think, oh... I know that actor, I remember him in Lost. I'm now going to go and listen to it. They jump on board, fall in love with Mark and me, and hopefully stick around for the long run. Not only that, if you're on Facebook, why not hit the share button? You might see the update. It's literally two clicks of a button this time, and will go a long way. And on Instagram, even if you just like it, it helps other people on your feed see it, and that weird algorithm that no one can work out might just get the point where I'll get more views than normal. Or if you really want to go the distance, why not share it on your stories? I see people doing this each and every week and it really does go a long way. So thank you to all those people. And Mark and Me can't survive without sponsorship. And I do this without having adverts all over my podcast. All I do is I have a Patreon page set up. If you're new to Patreon, it's basically like walking past someone in the street and giving them a couple of pounds as a tip. Or if you've enjoyed a meal in a restaurant going, here you go, here's two or three pounds. It's exactly the same concept for the podcast. It's a way each and every month of saying thank you and giving a little back to this podcast. I'm an independent podcaster. I don't have a big studio or marketing team or any budget. It's because I love doing it. But because of the podcast on sites like Amazon, 
Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all these different directories, it costs me money. So if you can give that little pound or two pound back each and every month, it goes right back into the podcast and allows me to keep it going and get out there and record more interviews for you guys at home. All the links to everything that I've just mentioned are on markandme.com and I appreciate it all. Also, thanks to my good friends at Richer Sounds, each and every month I give some amazing prizes away for supporting the podcast. So stay tuned on social media to see what's coming up for this month's prize and thank you to those guys for supporting me as you do. I'll be back in only a few days' time with another brand new episode and we're getting very close to the big 250 soon and I can't wait to reveal that episode to you all. But as always, until the next time, look after yourself, take care, watch the monsters and I'll speak to you all very soon.